Hello everyone, one of the greatest challenges in online learning is to encourage our learners to be active in contributing their ideas or be engaged in a healthy or deep discussion in order for them to learn something. And one of the tools that I would love to introduce you in this video would be a Parley. It's a very nice tool for you to use. In Right, so this is how it looks like in the main page. If we go to parleyideas.com, the link is parleyideas.com, and you'll be introduced to this front page where you have the teachers and students. So what you need to do as a teacher is to sign up first for free. The free Parley accounts allows you to have up to 12 roundtable discussion, but unlimited access from your students. So all you have to do is like most of the tools out there, you create a roundtable, you give the code, and then the student can join directly. Or you can also ask them to uh, sign in so that you can keep track of who's uh, involved in your session. So right now, if you have no account, just click sign up for free. So you can sign up using your Google account or using your Microsoft account. Once you are in your Pilot account, you'll be introduced to this very minimalistic kind of dashboard. Nothing really fancy, but it's quite handy if you're viewing this using mobile phone or tablet it's clean and lightweight so i'm going to introduce you how to kind of use this uh, uh, platform so if you can see here this is a big button called new roundtable this is where we start our discussion board or kind of like a roundtable session you can browse the universe where you can see other people's roundtable like if i click now i would be able to see other people's uh, roundtable created by all you know everyone in the world if you want to use them you can just click on it and see what kind of discussion are they doing if you don't want then you can start your own um, palais so when you go back to your dashboard you will see courses you teach and courses you study this is for students of course if you're joining any round table this is the courses that you teach so you can create a course or you can name a subject or a class up to you so let's say i'm going to start a new one so let's say english 101 I'll create one now and then your class is empty at the moment or your course is empty at the moment so you can create one round table first so once you create a round table you will see uh, the option to choose the online where it's self-paced you can do it for blended or even you know synchronous or asynchronous depending on how you like it live will be synchronous which is like a live class session where you can lead the discussion with your students so you have a choice and then you will also see the uh, the number of roundtables that you can create in your free trial account like I said free account up to 12 and um, you know if you need more you have to sign up but I think 12 will be sufficient for your use because you don't have to do this all the time but let's say if I go to online mode now so I have a, a few options here I can actually choose the one from the universe just now or I can start from my portfolio if i have created a few i can choose from my portfolio if not i have to start from scratch let's say i don't have any at the moment so i'm going to start from scratch so what i like about parlay is it comes with a template like this to guide us on what to do so if you have no idea you can click on the roundtable template here you know uh, the parlay template think pair share you know uh, jigsaw method and you know all, all this so it really helps us to think of what and how to structure our discussion let's say i'm going to use the think pair share method so i will just use you know i i will be able to read this kind of uh, instruction given by pale if i don't want i can just delete this so i can do part one so i can do my own instruction so you can put in different types of content here you can put pictures infographic links to some reading resources or maybe you can embed your own article here by uploading the article right so or you can embed uh embed videos so for video or media you just have to put the code like a youtube video here so the youtube video will be embedded like this and then you give them what kind of question you want to uh you know for your student to to answer you can use the template here right and follow the guideline and save and close so this is where your you know kind of like your round table will be uh, structured according to what you want it to be 
right then you have a choice anonymity if you want your student to be anonymous you can turn it on uh, if you don't want then you want the names to be revealed then turn it off or no okay and then assessment this is what i like about Pali. it comes with assessment and peer feedback if you want uh, assess let's say there's an activity to be assessed then you can set the kind of uh, assessment that you want to check so there are a few things that uh, is already embedded here you have a few rubrics i call it or criteria that you can use if you don't like all these criteria you can actually create your own criteria which is very handy so let's say you want to evaluate certain thing which is already given by which are already given by uh palette so you can just tick and then save changes you can even decide the score what is the maximum score let's say you want to give 10 marks since save and then you can also turn on peer feedback if you would like the peer to be evaluating their own friends you know uh, feedback and all that you can also turn it on so there are a few questions that you can use for your uh, students to learn in giving feedback so these are all guidance for the students to how to give feedback to their peers if you want to you can just turn it on and off or you can type in your own question this is very very useful for peer assessment i really love this Okay, so this is how you set it up. Once you're done, you're happy with all the instruction and everything, you just have to click invite, give the code to your student, and your student will enter the uh, the code in the paliaideas.com webpage that I showed you earlier. Or you can use the link directly. You can embed it anywhere you like in your uh, learning management system. If you're using Google Classroom, you can link to your uh, post it directly to your Google Classroom. Or if you're using Microsoft Team, it can also be linked and synchronized with your Microsoft Team. But in order for this to work you have to sign in using your microsoft account all right or you can manually add your student by assigning that so this is how it looks like in the uh, students view so you give them the code here the student will just key in the code and then join the student have to sign in using their gmail and then they pick as a student and then they click join so the student will be able to see this uh, interface so they'll have your question on the uh, left hand side and on the right hand side they will be able to type their responses so they can say i think this is good for example and then they can add their, whatever they want to add here table and all that they can submit and confirm so it's based on your thread here all the content here and they will you will be able to see who is the one responding so if they want to uh, comment let's say if i click comment here this is where other students will be commenting and you can see the guidance just, just now right the one that you put on the peer feedback guidance so you the student will be able to see this and they will be able to know what to respond to assessment is from your side okay so so far they can see that they are then zero still all right so if i go to uh, the teacher view so if i go to my view as a teacher i'll be able to see the student responses here one by one and then i'll be able to assess that so let's say if i click on the assessment tab i'll be able to key in my marks let's say this is four and then this is four as well and so on you can key in and then you can give your feedback good and all that say in and then if the student go back to their view they'll be able to see their score immediately so it's i think it's a good way of uh, transparency in in helping learners to learn but if you don't want them to see the assessment then you can turn it off so that they can uh, they don't have to see it because you can mark it manually all right but i think transparency is key in learning so that they know what to improve the feedback that you provide will be able to help them to learn better and they will be able to engage in a better discussion or giving better answers all right so that's the normal roundtable which can be done asynchronously meaning it doesn't have to be real time they can do it on a self pace you can even do it uh, during your live session if you want to like a breakout room activity right you can assign them in groups but they can discuss as a group and then give their responses so let's say if i want to create a live one just just to let you see if you create a live roundtable the uh, the interface is like this so in the live discussion uh, session you can name your discussion up here and then you invite your student as usual this function is useful if you are not using zoom or you're not using google meet for the session everyone is in your Pali 
uh, classroom then it will be easier for you to do this if you're using a uh, zoom google mean or microsoft team then you might as well use those features inside rather than having another live session here so what i mean here is the features here are similar to those already in the live uh, uh, conferencing tools like google meet and all that but let's say you want to do it here right you have to imagine like this is the stage the empty stage here and the students are waiting to come in so if you click start here the student will be prompted that the session has started and this this is how it looks like you can see like they uh, you know they can take notes they can wait for your poll they can uh, do what, whatever, uh, you know, guidance in terms of what are the things that they can say. This is what I like because they give you the sen sentence stem for the students to learn how to say something. The students have four options here. New idea, challenge, build on, question. So the student can indicate what they want to, to, to contribute in terms of new idea, challenge or whatever. So let's say if they want to have new idea, if they click on new idea, you will see that in your view, you will see the indicator new idea here. So you, you, if you will know that this student is going to give some new idea. So what you need to do is you just add this student to the queue and the student will be in the speaker corner here and then they will be prompted to speak. So they will be waiting for the turn to speak. And then, you know, all these are all the, the other speakers or other students. Okay. So you have the option to do poll. All right. You can add new poll here whatever you want to ask and then you'll be shown to your students you can have prompts as well if you need to add more prompts to guide your students uh, you can enable audio or disable audio all right and uh, you can enable queue or disable queue so if you disable queue means everyone will be able to talk if you want them to talk simultaneously or else if you turn on the queue then they'll have this function on the side here you will allow one by one to talk so that's all for the introduction to Pale. I see this as a really nice tool for, for you to encourage deeper uh, discussion or higher level of cognitive engagement where the students will be actively contributing to a set of prompts or materials, materials that you have provided in a systematical order. And it also allow peer assessment and encourages uh, transparency in the way you grade them and all that. So that's all about Pale. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.